All right. Take three. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had a fan all too long. Too loud, so I had to restart. Okay. Um, this is JD. I'm coming at you with my NFL predictions, like the really, really, really early predictions. This is solely based on last season and what I saw from them in the NFL draft. So without further ado, I'm going to start with the AFC. AFC East. The Patriots will win this division again at about 12-4, and four, um, at the lowest, maybe 11-5. and five. Um, They're not going to lose this division until they lose Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. It's just my personal opinion on that. I don't think they're going to lose either of them anytime soon. So, um, Jets will come in second and with 9-7. and seven. Bills third with 8-8. Eight and eight. Dolphins will bring up the rear at 3-13. and 13. Um, Jets and Bills are teams that are talented enough to give the Patriots a run. The problem with this is they've never shown consistency to do that. And that's where I'm gauging a lot of this. I'm, gauging, I'm going off a lot of history here. But that's the same thing with the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins actually have a pretty good team talent-wise. But they just can't put it all together because they don't have a good coach. Last year they had a stretch of being decent with Campbell. But he's not consistently a good coach. I mean, he, he, he gave like a change of pace and gave a new attitude for a while. But he's not exactly like a full-blown, I know what I'm doing coach. Um, he just kind of gave them a shot in the arm. And it, it, it rode the adrenaline of that for a couple games. So, Jets and Bills. There's a possibility they could they could they could easily one of those teams could step up and give the Patriots a run for their money. Um, but at the very least, I think one of them will make a wild card. Jets or Bills. Um, if I had to put money on it, I would go with the Jets. Um, they have a lot of offensive talent, and the team seemed to be put together a lot better last year. Uh, in the uh, Rex Ryan kind of beat them. Uh, I wish they'd have made the playoffs because I don't like Steelers. Steelers would have made the playoffs, but it is what it is. Um, in AFC North, AFC North, I have the Bengals winning at 11 and 5. Bengals are the most consistent team in that division. They have a decent running game, decent passing game, and uh, almost like like a step below elite, but a very good defense. Okay. Um, Andy Dalton had a good offense last, or was pretty good last year. The reason why they're not at a better record is because they lost their offensive coordinator in, uh, Hugh Jack, Jackman, Jackson, Jack, whatever, Hugh Jackson. Um, and he's with the Browns now. Um, Ravens will go 10 and 6. Ravens last year lost eight games by less than a touchdown. Um, I, they got Flacco injured. They had Steve Smith injured. Uh, Joseph Forsett. They had so many injuries. How can you not even think that they're going to be somewhat decent? They beat the Steelers twice, playoff team. They beat a bunch of had a bunch of teams they lost by like a point or two. Um, but just you know, uh, odds of uh, just by odds alone, they're going to at least be a little bit better. And they were five and eleven, I think, last year. So by odds alone, they're going to win half the games they lost. So they're going to get at least nine, nine, nine to ten wins. Um, Steelers are having me nine and seven. I think the Steelers are on a Ben Roethlisberger decline, and here's why. First off, Le'Veon Bell's coming back from injury. You don't know what he's going to be. Second off, their defense is not very good. Third, Ben has moments last year where he was like elite. Then he has moments where he throws a few interceptions and he can't score. And honestly, he just has moments where he just doesn't seem like he's got it. And he's a very good quarterback. He was elite. He's been elite the last couple of years. But it just seems like at the end of this year, he was, like, gradually declining. So, um, plus they're losing Mar Mart Martellus Bryant, Martavius Bryant, for a season, which it sucks. It really sucks. Here's why. He's a deep threat. That's the first thing. He's a 6'4". He's a jump baller. Um... Heath Miller's gone, which I don't think that's too huge a deal because Jesse James is their tight end that was playing for him, and he played great last year. So anytime, anytime he saw him, he was making a play, get a short pass for first down or something. So we'll be okay, but um, I think just like last year when they had um, Michael Vick running quarterback, they were their offense was stifened because you couldn't get the ball to your playmakers. I think something like that's going to happen again this year. Not that Ben's going to get hurt, but because you only have one real deep threat, 
I think you can double up on Antonio Brown and force someone else to beat you. And who's that going to be? In the past, it was Martellus or Martavius Bryant. Um, who's that going to be? I mean, I'm not saying that they can't do it. I'm just saying if, if I'm if I'm putting money on it, I don't think they're going to be that good this year. I think they'll compete for the Ravens in, in a playoff spot, but or a wild card spot. But I don't have them like running away with the division or anything. So, Browns. Um, I have them six and ten. I'm um, adding RG three and adding Hugh Jackson. They draft a lot of receivers. They might actually surprise people. They could go as high as eight and eight um, if RG three stays healthy and you know they contour to his his style of play. I think they're gonna surprise some people. They may, they're not gonna get the playoffs or win the division, but they're gonna upset some of these teams. They're gonna upset some of these teams and they're gonna do pretty decent this year. Jaguars or I'm sorry NFC South. Jaguars are gonna win this division this year. They've been steadily improving every year. I think Blake Bortles is, is due for a huge breakout season. Um, um, he's he's due for a huge breakout season. I, I kind of can't wait to see this. Um, but they're going to be right there with the Texans. Them and the Texans are going to be like 10 and 6. One's, one may be 10 and 6. One may be 9, 6 and 1. Um, or they're both 10 and 6, but Jags hold the tiebreaker. Um you have there's so much unknown variables with the Texans. Um, secondary is not that great, and I don't know how Brock Osweiler is going to look. But Bill O'Brien's got the team getting better every year, so I could really be wrong on this, and, and Texans could easily run away with this division. But I have the Jags stepping up. They had some really good receivers that stepped up last year, and they they retained those guys. And they have uh, Dante Fowler, I think is his name, coming back from injury. He'd have been a big piece of that defense last year. So I just see them being better than they were last year and significantly better and healthier. Um, they just get that running game going. I think they'll be okay. Colts. Colts have still not fixed their problems. They draft horribly every year. Andrew Luck is a good player, and that's why I have him going 8-8 because he's such a good player, and T.Y. Hilton is a good player, but they don't fix their needs. They need a strong running back. DeMarco Murray was the best choice they could have had two years ago because he is a hard downhill runner and he wears down a defense. That would have been perfect to pair with Andrew Luck. But that's not what they want to do. They want to put band-aids on gunshot wounds and they don't really fix the issue. Now maybe they drafted well this year. We'll have to see. But every time I look on my computer at the draft grades from every analyst, they get horrible draft grades. Why? They go after the bang and not the buck. Not the thing that they need. They don't draft for needs. And their owner is, thinks he's a rock star. Well, you're gonna you're squandering a very talented quarterback. Andrew Luck's going to be punch drunk very, very soon if he keeps getting hit the way he does. And he's not going to be healthy either. And that guy's a good quarterback. He's one of the best. He's probably his top five quarterback talent-wise. So you got to keep him healthy so he can actually show you how talented he is. Then I have the Titans running down the bottom. The reason why I have Titans running the bottom is, um, you know, Mariota's still learning. They don't really have any great offensive weapons yet. And they got DeMarco Murray. I don't understand why DeMarco Murray went there. They run a lot of the read option stuff that Chip Kelly runs because Mariota's a mobile quarterback. So I don't understand the point in drafting him. Now, if they just go with the downhill running game with DeMarco, that's fine. But I don't see that it, I that would just kind of handcuff your quarterback a little bit because he's not using the, doing the stuff he's used to. Unless they use, do that with a sub. Unless they have a sub they drafted that does that. And they just go downhill hard running with DeMarco. AFC West. Chiefs will win this division. I don't understand the hatred towards the Chiefs in the NFL. And what I mean by that is, is they get every year... They just get thrown to the side, and everyone else, um, no one likes them. No one picks them to win anything. They won the last nine games last year. They won a playoff game, and they were in an opportunity to beat the Patriots late. Okay, so you got to factor all that in. And they didn't lose any key players. They retained most of their players. They got Jamal Charles coming back. They drafted another receiver, um, and they would have beat the Patriots if the receivers could catch a football. <laughs> I can watch that game and I can point out a dozen different times in like the fourth quarter where and Alex Smith, sorry, makes a key pass or the pass 
to make the play, and the guy drops. I'm sorry. You've got to catch the football, and that's not on him. Not to mention there was a couple injuries in that game that really screwed him over, too. So, And their defense was just amazing last year. So I have them winning the division because they're, they're retaining most of their players. They're going to be consistent. Okay, Denver loses Peyton Manning. I don't think that's that too much of a, of a hit. I have Denver going 10-6. and six. reason why is they're going to have two choices. They're going to either start Mark Sanchez, which I don't think I'd start, or Paxton Lynch. Honestly, I would choose Paxton Lynch because you're going to be running the ball a lot. Your defense is still pretty good. Your offensive line was decent. And your running game is pretty solid, retaining C.J. Anderson, and you know you have a whole you know slew of running backs, and you have good receivers, and Demarius Thomas, and then you have Emmanuel Sanders. Um, so I think they're still going to be pretty decent. Um, they could easily just overtake the Chiefs because maybe Chiefs get an injury, Maul Charles gets injured every other year. Um, this could be the this should be the year he doesn't get injured because he's a great player, catches the ball great out of the backfield. Uh, Andy Reid is a good coach. That's where I give the edge. And really, Andy Reid's a great coach. And he's built the team really well. The first year he started there, they were like 2-14. and 14. The very next year, he won like his first 10 games. Um, they made the playoffs. Now, the year after that, they didn't make the playoffs because they had a lot of injuries. Then last year, they did what they did. So, Raiders are 8-8. Eight and eight. Um, This team is getting better, but so is the division around them. This is a tough division um, because all these teams could technically win the division. It's just, will they? Raiders just seem to have a black cat that runs around their, their uh, facility. And it just, last year, the, I thought they were going to go at least 8-8. Eight and eight. They didn't. They went 6-10. I thought they were going to be better than that. But, you know, they've added good pieces. They've added pieces to be better. Can they put it all together? That's the question. I I I think Jack Del Rio is a good coach, so I think he can, but we'll see. Chargers. Chargers, I want to say coaching. Bill Rivers is being wasted. He needs to be traded to somebody else. Um, his, the twilight of his, his career is being wasted. He needs to get traded to a team that can contend. Um, that's the best way I can describe that. Um, Antonio Gates is a good player too. It's they don't consistently put it together. They were a decent team last year. They're not going to put it together again. Um, that's the best way I can describe that. And their coach doesn't seem to be helping them do that much. NFC. Here we go. NFC West. Cardinals will have the probably the best record in, in the in the, in the conference. Um, Cardinals thirteen and three. Um, the offense looked really good last year. I think they still have. Larry Fitzgerald, um, they add, they added a running back, I'm pretty sure, in the offseason. <coughs> and their defense was stout, and I don't think they lost anyone crazy. They also added Chandler Jones from the uh, Patriots. And um, it's going to be a big add to that defense. That run defense has got a lot better. So Seahawks will be 11-5. They don't have Marshawn Lynch. They're de- they've just been steadily declining every year since they won the Super Bowl. Um, can they get after it? Sure. Can they win a Super Bowl or get get back to the playoffs and win a Super Bowl? Sure, they're talented enough. Um, I think Marshall Lynch losing him is a big blow to that team, though, because he was kind of like the attitude that held the glue together. Uh, Wilson, I expect a big season out of Russell Wilson, though. Uh, 49ers, 6 and 10. Uh, Chip Kelly, that's all I can say. Chip Kelly's going to have that uh, Kaepernick being very mobile. Um, and very successful. So that's why I can put that. Um, but the team overall was not very good. So six and ten. Rams five and eleven. Next year I have them being better. Next year, it's what's his name's first year. Uh, golf, yeah, Jared Golf. So I want to see that before I make any astro- astronomical predictions on that team. But I think their defense is okay, and they got a decent running back. It's got to put it all together. And I don't f- trust uh, Jeff Fisher. So he need lose this year, get him fired, and get another coach in there. That's what I want them. That's what I want for them personally. I think he he is holding them back personally. Panthers. Oh, I'm sorry, the NFC South. I keep doing that. Panthers, 11 and 5. I think they come back down to earth. Um, they're not going to be what they were last year. Um, defensively, I think their offense will still be pretty good. They're going to add Kelvin Benjamin. 
They didn't draft any needs on offense. That doesn't make any damn sense to me. They didn't draft a running back. They didn't draft any receivers, no tight ends, nothing. All they did was draft defensive players and offensive linemen. The offensive line was pretty good last year. Yeah, you gave up sacks in the Super Bowl, but you gave up sacks in the Super Bowl through the best rush defense in the league. <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? So they didn't draft very well, so I have them coming back down. But I don't think any team in the division got better. Falcons, 9-7. and seven. Um, I had Matt Ryan in fantasy last year, and he sucked. After the first five games, that guy, that guy didn't know what he was doing. He just like, looked like a deer in headlights. Um, Saints, um, their offense will be good, but I don't think their defense will get any better. It just doesn't. It's not going to get any better. And the Bucks. The Bucks are the team that I think could surprise everyone. Actually, um, I have them going 4-12 and just because coaching. I think it's the best thing, coaching. Um, they have a new coach and I just never see consistency out of them. So until I see consistency out of them, I can't, I can't bank on them having consistency. You know what I mean? Packers. 11 and 5 win the division. This is one of the toughest divisions in the league. The top three got teams in this division are, are tough, are tough as nails. Um, 11 and 5 Packers will have back Jordy Nelson. Um, Eddie Lacey will be healthier. The, deep, the issue I have with that team is their defense. Um, the defense was pretty good last year. It was better than it has been. But the division's such a gauntlet. I actually have a surprise second place team is the Bears. Um, when you have um, John Fox as your coach, on that alone, you're going to improve. You're going to get better on having John Fox as your coach. And they got better last year. Um, Jay Cutler looked better than he has in the past. Um, they're having Kevin White come back this year. They still have Alshon Jeffrey. I um, mean, they lost Matt Forte, but I think the, the guy they have running for them now is pretty good. The defense was better than it has been in the past, and they were a competitive team last year. So I have them turning that around because John Fox is a good coach. The Vikings, 9-7, and seven, they could easily overtake this division. Question is consistency. Consistency where? At the quarterback position. I personally do like Teddy Bridgewater. I think he's a future good player, but he has to prove it. And it doesn't help him that he does not have consistent good receivers on this team. Um, he still has Adrian Peterson. The defense last year was pretty stout. I think it's Zimmerman. Zimmer? Mike Zimmer? Yeah, Mike Zimmer. He's their coach, and he's a good defensive coach, but you've got to be able to put the ball in the end zone. If you could just score a touchdown... Against the freaking um, Seahawks, you'd have been in the NFC semis, <laughs> divisional game or whatever it's called. And I think you probably would have beat what's their names. So, um, let's see here. Redskins, um, the NFC East. This one I will elaborate on because my favorite team is in here. And I'm going to make a strong case for the Redskins winning this division. Redskins will go 12 and 4 in this division. The Alvis will go 10 and 6. Giants go 8 and 8. Eagles 5 and 11. Redskins won the division last year. Okay. Why? Because they they finally took the handcuffs off of um, Kirk Cousins and decided to let him start playing the football. You no one no one on the internet can convince me we don't have one of the best offenses in the NFC. In the MC period, we have are loaded. We are loaded. Um, now it's assuming that a lot of that is predicated on Kirk Cousins playing well. Okay, but let's go over the talent that the Redskins have: Jordan Reed, Vernon Davis, and Niles Paul at tight end. That's pretty darn good, in my personal opinion. Jordan Reed, Vernon Davis, Niles Paul. It's pretty freaking good. If you ask me. Okay? That's the first thing. Those are our tight ends. And Jordan Reed was the second best tight end in the league last year, second only to Gronk. Okay? Now, if he has anywhere near that this year, mm, you better look out. He was averaging a touchdown uh, a touchdown a game um, whenever the Redskins finally took the gloves off and started like letting the offense swing the football a little bit. <clears throat> okay, those are the receivers, or tight ends. And I also mentioned Vernon Davis can be a good tight end. Okay, if he goes back to form like he was early in his 49er days, it's going to be good. But he's not the number one here. He's not the number one tight end. And the way um, 
Gruden likes to use his tight ends, he'll create really good mismatches. And he'll get the ball to his playmakers, which Vernon Davis can be a playmaker. And he has the fastest 40 time in the history of the NFL for tight ends. So that's a dirty, that's a dirty combo. That's as good a combo as you're going to have as, as Hernandez and Gonzalo, or uh, Gronkowski. A lot less murder. <laughs> um, now let's look at the wide receiving core. Wide receiving core you have Jackson, the kid that just drafted, I can't remember his name. Um, He's a baller, by the way. Um, Garcon, kid that's drafted, Jackson. Okay, those are our three starting receivers, probably. Then you have Crowder and Grant, and they both of those were great players last year. We got rid of Aldrick Robertson. Um, I'm kind of disappointed in that Roberts. That's the name Roberts, not Robinson. Um, got rid of him. A little disappointed. We got rid of Alfred Morris, but Matt Jones can run the football hard. He says hang on the football. Um, he also has to stay healthy. And that's my issue with Matt Jones personally is not due to his talent. It's the fact that he is six foot one, six two, and he runs very upright. And that's bad for running backs because your legs take a pounding. The more likely you are to get hit, the odds are you're going to get injured. That's all there is. That's basically the best way to put it. But we drafted a pretty good running back out of Georgia. I think his name is Marshall. Um, offensive line was pretty good last year. Really good passing offensive line. Um, the offensive line is pretty good last year. I think it'll get better now that you're under Bill Callahan. Um, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how that works. Okay. Um, defense got better. Now I know we lost a couple players, but Hatchet was, you know, could never play. Um, we added Norman. We added that safety. I'm still learning how to pronounce these guys' names, so bear with me on that. We added that safety out of U USC. And he looks like he's like another Sean Taylor, which, you know, that's a bold statement, but I really hope he can step up and be that. And our defense wasn't bad last year. It forced a lot of turnovers. So if we get back to that and we can be a little bit better, get some more turnovers, stop the run more, you know, with Josh Norman stopping the pass can be better. I think with this division, all the teams, and I'll go over the rest here in a minute, can score. How many teams can stop people? I think the Redskins can stop people. Dallas, offensively, I can't lie. If Tony Romer is healthy, this offense is one of the best offenses in the league. Okay? Ezekiel Elliott, they have Alfred Morris, and they have DeMarco Murray. Three running backs that are pretty good. Um, one's a game breaker in Ezekiel, and the other two are are just like, you know, third down, pounder backs. Okay? Sorry, my screen keeps timing out here. Um... So, and then they have Des Bryant, they have decent receiver, or Cole Beasley, uh, who's that big kid from Baylor? Terrence Williams, there we go. So they're, they're loaded on offense, but their defense is god freaking off. Okay, they will not be able to stop anyone. So they have to hope that their offense can outscore teams, which it can, but their defense can't stop anyone. So they're going to have to score almost every possession to um, give their defense a chance. So... Um, Giants, offensively, they were the eighth, eighth best offense in the league last year. Beckham Jr. is good. If they have Victor Cruz back healthy, they're gonna, it's gonna, they're gonna, it's gonna help them. And they drafted a pretty good receiver. I can't think of his name though. Um, problem with them is their defense was horrible. They put a lot of money on their defense, over 200 million almost. And, but you've got to be able to put it together. You, you can put all the money you want into a team, but until you put it together, the lowest salary in the league is the Patriots, and they are successful every year. Why is that? Because so, yeah, they have the mastermind, the king of the castle, the you know chess master himself, and Bill Belichick that puts it all together, puts players where they need to be to be successful based on their talents. Okay, that's the problem with a lot of teams. They can be as talented as they want. That's the problem with the Raiders. The Raiders are very good, and they put it together. That's the real thing. Eagles, they're in a rebuilding phase. Um, they, they pretty much tanked um, a lot of their stuff into Carson Wentz, which I think he'll be okay quarterback, but I don't think he'll start this year. I think he'll go Sam Bradford, and he'll have a pretty decent season, honestly. But, you know, they have a good offense as well. They have good offensive players. Their defense is the question. So we shall see. But that is my prediction. Um, if I had to go crazy on my prediction... Right now, I'm um, doing this on the spot. I never planned this. Uh, 
out of the NFC, I, my ideal Super Bowl is, AF, is the AFC would be the Chiefs and the NFC be the Redskins. And then the Redskins would win. That'd be my ideal one. But if I had to put money on it, I think that I think the Chiefs could actually make the Super Bowl this year, but it'd be Chiefs and Cards. Cardinals. If I had to put money on it, that'd be my guess. They were so close last year and they just they got overwhelmed by the Panthers. Um so I think the NFC championship game will be the Redskins against the Cardinals. Cardinals will win. And then the AFC Championship will be the Chiefs versus the Patriots. Patriots will lose. Um, so that might make a lot of people happy. But I do think it's going to be Chiefs-Cardinals. And hopefully the Chiefs win. Um, but my ideal one would be the Chiefs versus the Redskins. And the Redskins win. But um, that's my prediction. That's my NFL video. Uh, Waywo, it's a really, really, really early prediction. Uh, after preseason, I'll probably do this again. Okay? See ya.